So here we are looking at the um, immersion heater in this water tank and um, we've come to take a look at it because the tenant was reporting no hot water. Uh, they were able to, to boost it with this element up here. Hi welcome back to the channel this is Mark from Apprentice One to One and Powersonic Limited. In today's video we're looking at a faulty immersion heater element. It's um, a tenant that's reported lukewarm water or no, wa no hot water at all to the letting agent and we're going to go and have a look and see what the actual problem is. Um, the arrangement is that there's a there's a top heating uh, boost element and a, and a lower off peak element as well. So we're going to run through some of the test procedures that you can do to determine if it's a safe, um, be functional, and you know if there might be any gremlins in there that you can report to the letting agent that may be brewing, brewing for the future and not causing an issue today. Um, so yeah, we'll cover that later on in the video. Uh, also, just want to quickly touch on um, the content I'm producing. Primarily, it's set towards kind of. Um, show apprentices some of the tools we use and um, some of the test equipment we use uh, the varied role of installation work that's out there and also safe working practices that's very important to me so we're covering off safe isolation and the equipment you need to use in doing that and then working safely with your, your probes in and around live parts as well when you're carrying out um, live tests on energized equipment um, and while I accept some of the content I'm producing isn't going to be for everyone it's not deliberate it's not me trying to show off or anything like that it's just me practicing my editing skills so i'm trying to put together as much content as i can um, across a whole range of things so there is tool reviews and band tours and things like that but, and people are finding it interesting because ironically those videos are getting more views than anything else if we're basing it basing it on views that's not really how i look at it myself obviously people are enjoying it and i'm, I'm trying to practice more than anything so i'm trying to get better at the editing at the presenting the way i'm showing this to people and the only way to do that is to get videos out there so that's what I'm going to keep doing there's probably loads of ones I've done that are utter rubbish and you don't enjoy um, just scroll by them and wait for the better ones to come that you might enjoy so the stuff that you'd like to see yourselves on YouTube don't be put off from doing things like this I spent a long time not wanting to go on video and be um, involved in putting my work on display and this, in this kind of way and I really enjoy it and I'd recommend it to anyone so if you're seeing things on YouTube you don't like then perhaps make some videos yourselves of the things that you, you do like, because other people would no doubt find that interesting as well. And I'd love to see more channels popping up and more people on, on YouTube, more Sparks getting involved in that area. Um, we're all on other social media platforms, so why not YouTube as well? Let's see more people doing it, not less. Um, you know, that's, that's my opinion on it. Uh, other content we've got coming soon, we're going to be looking at um, SPDs and AFDDs, um, the difference between a split load consumer unit and an RCBO consumer unit, because I've had questions from apprentices about all of that, obviously, if you're 16, 17 coming into the trade, you're not going to know. Um, the seasoned electricians among us would just expect that, you know, that's a given. But it's not for everybody who's in the trade. We need to acknowledge that we've got such a wide, um, varied level of expertise and knowledge within the electrical industry from people walking straight in the door who don't have a clue how to hold one screwdriver from one end to the other to someone who knows everything inside out and back to front. So my channel's trying to cover all those areas. So there's going to be videos I do that are of interest to certain people at certain times. Um, and that's just the, that's just the way it is. Uh, we're also going to have a little chat about um, Part P, the building regulations and the certificates that you would need for certain uh, works in, in a domestic property. So some, some things that you can do um, that don't require a Part P notification and some things that absolutely do, de do need one. And the electrical certificates you'd expect to be producing based on certain tasks. So we're going to have a little chat through that as well on some of the next videos because I thought that could be useful to apprentices and actually um, homeowners as well. So, you know, that's um, taking it away from seasoned electricians who should know these things. Um, so that's just to put that content into another domain as well. But anyway, let's cut to this one now. Let's go and have a look how we test some immersion heater elements. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Give me your feedback on this video. And uh, if you've got any other testing um, methods and ideas that you use in this situation yourself, drop it in the comments. And, um, you know, let's all try and help raise standards between ourselves. I'd love to hear what how, how other people work and tackle this kind of thing. This is just the way I approach it. So yeah, enjoy. And to get hot water, but obviously it doesn't heat the tank all the way through, so they didn't have enough. There's quite a lot of them living this property, so um, you know they need a full tank of hot water as you as you'd like in any house, really. Um, but as you'll see with this, um, the uh, element itself um, wasn't actually switched on from the controller. Um, I think this was user error more than anything. They've been uh, maybe fiddling around with the boost and not left it set in the right mode. They've had it on water heater off, um, which which disables both of the um, the off peak and peak um, heaters. The actual 
uh, process should be that you'd leave it untimed and then you can boost it with the little um, dial down here should you need to and it will work on the the timed clock here so when it swings over to the off peak hours it, tr it kicks in and fires up the the bottom tank heater and because that switch has been moved um, at some stage it's uh, it's been left in the off position so that's why they've not been getting hot water overnight but while we're here I thought we'd run through a test on the immersion heating element just to check we've got no gremlins in the system and there's other videos on the internet about doing the uh, on YouTube doing this um, in depth but I thought it'd be good to see real world scenario so I've got the TIS MFT Pro with me and you know you can do this with um, a low resistance meter or a multimeter uh, but just for illustration purposes this was the easiest uh, way of showing you what I'm actually measuring so we'll, we'll get to it and you'll see here I've got the probes across the heating element itself so I've popped the, um, the thermostat out here just so I can show you where the probes are more than anything uh, you do need to make sure that it's, it's disconnected off the prongs but you know you obviously wouldn't normally have to pull it out quite this far and again make sure you've done safe isolation on this circuit before you start opening any internal components which I've done and I will um, show you the evidence of that further on in this in this video um, but if we flick over to the MFT Pro and I'll try and get it in some sort of light where you can maybe see it it's a bit difficult uh, there we go so you see there let's pop it onto continuity and you'll see it's showing you to insert the probes in the positive and negative terminals which in this instance is the blue and the black and then if we I see I've nulled the leads as well so they're all nulled I don't know how this is showing on camera because it's a bit of a funny angle that seems the best angle actually so I'll hold it there and then if I hit the test button you'll see here it starts to make a measurement for resistance and we've got a measurement of 18.9 ohms and that's typically what you'd expect to find on an immersion element um, so yeah I'm, I'm quite happy there that the elements intact we've not got a, a reading to infinite um, which would show that there'd been a, a burnout in the element and that it was no longer functioning um, so this is this is a good indication that we're okay but it's not the final test that we need to be doing I mean obviously you can test that the thermostat itself is working and throwing power over um, to the uh, element when the, when the time is right but one of the other tests we can do here is if we swap to insulation resistance and you'll see there it's set to a thousand volts I'll drop it onto 500 uh, the reason I'd set it to a thousand volts is I've already done a, a brief measurement now if we take the, that one off and pop the, this one on so I'll get that on a better angle actually so you can see so now we're on one of the, the pins to the element and to earth and we're going to check the insulation resistance value um, of that and see if I can get that in some better light again this is not the easiest cupboard to work in there we go so I need an extra set of hands but we'll hit test and see what happens so you can see there it's making a measurement and it's showing there the insulation resistance is climbing uh, and this is you know when I first put it on test at 250 volts I was reading around 2 mega ohms, which is sort of the limit of what you could allow for a heating element um, and not expect it to trip an, an RCBO and um, you know that initially flagged some alarm bells but then I realised they've had this heating ele element off for a number of weeks they actually first reported an issue uh, a month ago the first we heard about, about it was last week and um, we came immediately but there was no tenant in and the, the letting agent couldn't source the keys so we're back here today and um, yeah I thought if I fire a thousand volts through the heating element it would just clear out any of the moisture that might have built up in there um, between the casing and the element inside and that's proved to be the case because this is climbing all the time um, it's up to 15 now and um, if I keep repeating the insulation resistance tests you'd see it rise even further but if we pop it over so I've popped it over onto the other prong now and we'll just repeat that test so you can see here again it's climbing so it's what, what I will do is I will put a, a temporary supply onto this heating element and um, run it up and make sure that it's all dried out and that that um, um, reading climbs further um, I mean there is an indication that there's a problem there and with all heating elements uh, as you will appreciate 
over time and usage they do break down to earth that's usually the cause of failure and um, this one is probably on the way towards that it's been in a number of years so I'm going to recommend um, that it's certainly considered as a replacement the next time a plumber's in here doing some maintenance but it's nothing that's going to cause a problem now um, the, the tenants have no um, circuit breakers operating or ICBOs operating I should say uh, it's just a case of it's it's stopped working and I think that's because they um, flicked over to uh, not in use but anyway we've got this other element up here which we know has been working successfully because the boost function has been working a charm and they've been able to get electricity so uh, hot water sorry so I thought I would demonstrate on this one again with the uh, we'll start with the insulation resistance and I'll just stick it on one of these prongs I don't know if that's showing there, but we've got it on earth and one of the prongs to the element and again the thermostat just popped out and I'll try and get this on a decent angle, I'll just start it off testing then I can pick the torch up. So you'll see there that's showing an, an infinite reading and that's because this has been on this morning, it's thoroughly dried out, there's no condensation or moisture in that heating element at all and that's in good health, so that top one um, not an issue with at all. And we can also, if we swap this this one off and stick the blue one back onto the other probe, uh, other post, sorry, I don't know that's showing there, so we'll cross the posts again. And if we drop back into the home menu and choose continuity again and hit the test button, you should see here, again we're getting sort of 19.8 ohms, so it's under 20 ohms. Um, that's what you'd expect on a, on a 3 kilowatt uh, immersion element. So that's uh, that top one in, in good working order. So initially when you test these, so this is a prime example of why you need to think a little bit um, from a user's perspective, because it's it's just been sat there in the tank. Obviously the tank's been warming and cooling, condensation can form, and you can get some readings that might cause you concern uh, with with the immersion element itself. Because obviously if you measure in under two mega ohms, uh, there's a high probability that you're gonna be upsetting an RCD somewhere when it, it comes into operation. Uh, so it's just a factor there to um, make sure that it's been given a chance to to dry out and obviously we can put it on the job notes that there's a there's a suspected problem there that could develop over time and it's certainly worth considering replacing this at the next uh, plumber's visit in my opinion at this point in at this point in time obviously I'm going to run it up I'm going to get a full hot uh, tank of water for them off this bottom element and I'll do that just by swapping over the um the, the feeds in the in the programmer just so we can stick this bottom element onto boost and uh, get the tank full of hot water ready for the tenants coming over home this evening just a nice little thing to do and we can do that safely and uh, cause no danger to anyone just swap these over in the programmer for a short term and make sure we remember to put them back so they're not boosting the wrong tight uh, element longer term and obviously once I've done that um, I can I can strip it all apart again and I can take another insulation resistance reading off this um, bottom element and it'll either have improved or it won't um, and that can go in the report as well. It's, just, it's it's really good to give as much information as you can to the letting agents and then the decision is theirs isn't it between them and the, the property owner um, to decide exactly what they want to do um, but, it, but in this case I highly suspect it'll dry out and be just fine um, and we should get that reading right up um, hopefully towards infinite on the TIS MFT Pro. Time will tell. Um, but I'll cover a little bit more in this video at the at the consumer unit because I'm here as well to do an EICR and uh, I can show you some safe isolation practice if you like. I won't show you how to do it but I'll show you what I've done to make sure that I'm safe while all this work's getting carried out. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll jump to that further on in the video. I hope you found this a little bit enlightening as to how a, a heating element is supposed to be um, checked in the way that it can be working i mean there's still this is still not guaranteed because obviously once something's under load all bets are off things can change and stuff starts happening um, and it, it could be a case that the elements breaking down when it's actually in use and uh, under energy under energized use so i mean it's not not guarantee but i'm fairly happy that this is going to be fine and it is just a case of somebody has popped it on boost and then rather than let the clock expire and, and run around they've banged it over onto um water heater off so it's just turned it all off essentially and uh, even when the time comes on an evening it wasn't going to heat the water so yeah that's that's where we're at i think um and i'll uh, pop this back together and i'll show you actually how this operates and, and ex explain just in case 
um, you're a user of one of these and you're trying to figure out how to get your hot water on, you might have made the same mistake. So just bear with me five minutes and I'll jump back on the video. Here we are back at the Economy 7 control um, module, uh, and or programmer, should I say. And rather than faff about changing over the, the heating elements, I've realised because there's just one supply on the on the peak side of this consumer unit, which I'll show you in a short short while, um, it doesn't need to do with that. I can just fiddle around with a time clock and it'll pop the power onto it. And you can see here, this is how I found it. So it was in water heater off. And you'll see here, if I spin the boost time around, nothing's happening. It's not, not boosting at all. So there's nothing coming on. Uh, none of the elements are working. If I'm to mess around with this clock, you see you're spinning it all the way around to off peak hours. I heard it click in there. Nothing's happening at all. That's it clicked back off. If I now pop it into timed mode and I turn the boost on, you can see straight away we're getting that boost. So what I suspect has been happening is the operators have been have been flicking that down, turning the boost on to get some hot water, and then rather than letting it finish its countdown and go all the way back to off, they've just been doing that, I think. And that's been turning the element off. You see, if we leave it on time, that boost now is in the stop position, and we turn this clock here around to the off-peak hours where it should kick in. So you see now that's lit up the off-peak light, and we have got, I've checked, we have got power on that bottom element. So I'm just going to leave that there now and see if we can get the tank heated up and um, dry this element out and uh, see what we've got. And uh, as we do the EICR, I'll jump around and show you the consumer unit. It might just be pictures because this is somebody's flat and the consumer unit is in the kitchen. I don't want to get any of their possessions or stuff on show at all. So I might just have to do pictures uh, and talk through it. If I can get a camera angle set up nice enough. I'll show you what the consumer unit looks like and what we're dealing with. But yeah, I just thought I'd show you there how this um, this all comes together. And we'll see if we can get some hot water. And uh, yeah, I'll see you later on in the video. Okay, so I don't know how this is coming across on, on video. Um, there's no light in this little cupboard. And I can't move the camera any further back because it would pick up the homeowner's possessions. Uh, or sorry, the, the occupier's possessions. Um, but you can see here it's a split consumer unit. So it's dual supply coming in and the storage heaters are off the economy 7 metre. And the rest of the circuits are all on the on the main meter. The actual water heater itself doesn't have a direct supply on the off-peak side. Uh, it's just running uh, overnight. So it's essentially, um, you know, that could be powered anyway through the day. Really, I don't know. If, I don't know what the actual um, supply costs are. If they have a general lower rate for all the electricity they're consuming on an evening, I'm not sure. Um, but that's that's the that's the position we're in. The um, Main supply to this, it's a block of flats, so there's a, a communal riser cupboard with a meter and isolator in, and that's where I, I locked off to make sure this was all all dead um, when we've been doing safe isolation in the ICR, so that's that's good. Um, I can I can lock off that switch out there. I've then got the key to the riser cupboard as well, um, and the uh, installation is left totally safe from interference from anybody else. So I can have all these these off or open rather than off the open, and uh, and then I can be safe in the flat anyway because there's no one else in here but for that absolute 100% protection to anything coming into this consumer unit while I've got it open I can uh, go out into the riser cupboard as I have done, lock off out there and uh, make sure everything's totally safe I've then got the key for the cupboard and the padlock and um, work safe always do that, make sure everything's dead before you become dead and your dead, dead tests can all be done in a safe, safe manner so I'm um, yeah, that's that one, and the ICR on this property has actually come out fine. Just a couple of little snags. There's a heater in the bedroom that was a bit uh, iffy, and that was to do with a fuse connection point that's needed repair, and also the water heater element where I think they've just got a bit fuddled up with how they've been trying to use it, but we have actually identified that there's a potential there for some earth leakage problem that's building up for the future, so that's good to make the letting agents aware of. And uh, yeah, I'll, um, I'll show you some of my safe isolation gear um so you can see see what i'm talking about and i'll actually talk through some of the probes you can use as well but i'll probably do that back at the office because i've got to get on with this now and get it finished and uh and written up so i will actually I'll, I'll show you i'll show you out in the bag just to prove that i've got it with me and i'm not just saying this for camera catch you in a second so you can see i've got my proving unit and um my mega voltage indicators uh, it's really important that when you are doing these you put the gs38 covers on so I don't know if that's showing up on camera, trying to get it focused a bit, but 
you get those covers on the end to make sure you've not got too much exposed uh, metal work. And again, on these TIS probes, you can see I'm using the crocodile clips. Um, I would always put on the GS38 ends when I'm doing any uh, live measurements. I'll just pop these out of a little handy bag and show you the difference in those. So again there, you can see you just get that very, oh, I don't know how it's focusing, but that very small tip on the end. And, you know, they do pull off. So if I take this off on the crop clip, you can see there that's, that's not a probe you can use at all. And then these just slot on. So now you've got that GS38 um, probe. And uh, I'm not sure I can do this one-handed. I've managed to do it. So you'll see there, that's the probe exposed. You mustn't work live when it's like this. It's too much metal on show and um, you could catch yourself on it very easily. So make sure you're working safely when you are in enclosures uh, where live terminals are there and you're taking your measurements, obviously, for like your ZE, PFC um, and ZS accessories. Make sure you've got these on. Very important. So yeah, practice what I preach. Safe isolation and... Um, We've got the TIS kits that we're giving away. I've got one more left, actually. I'm going to run a competition on YouTube for that soon, so watch out for that. Uh, I hope you found this interesting so far. And, uh, yeah, rather than talk through anything else uh, at the unit, I've done it here. So, there, yeah, that's all it. Uh, this tank's now getting warm. The heating element's done its job. We've got hot water in there. I've done another IR test on it after it's been on for an hour. Uh, obviously, let it cool down a little bit before I started fucking around inside there. But uh, yeah, it's um, measuring fine now, so it's not a, not an issue, uh, I don't think. But I'm still going to mention it to the letting agent on the report for the job, and then they can make their mind up if they want to get a plumber out to have a look at it. Because I don't get wet, we don't change these at all. Too many issues before with uh, tanks warping. Obviously this is a pressurised tank anyway, so it won't go interfering regardless. But even if it's not, if it's just a normal copper tank cylinder, um, I've, I, we don't touch them because they can warp so easily. Yeah, that's a plumber's job for me. And then... If it starts walking and cracking, they can sort out the leaks, can't they? So if you found this video useful, and um, yeah, catch you on the next one. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks very much, and um, see you all later. Okay, just to kind of finish on this video, I wanted to show after I've let the um, element run its course for a short while. We've now got a tank full of hot water, which is a good shine, and I thought I'd just show you on here the insulation resistance test. Now it's had a chance to dry out. Shall we test that on there? And you can see now it's reading quite high. Um, that doesn't indicate to me that there's definitely no problem because obviously the insulation had dropped away. This is a min mineral insulated um, element with the looks of it. And um, yeah, they just they can absorb moisture, but usually you would have expected once they're dried out, um, the dry. So there's obviously a crack in the um, earth screen or in the case of the element somewhere that's that's maybe allowing a little bit of moisture to creep in there. It's um, not just going to be based on condensation, I wouldn't have said. Um, so yeah, my suspicion is that there's a bit of a breakdown going on with this element, and I'll certainly be reporting that to the um, letting agent. And then it's up to them really if they want to get a plumber out to replace it. Um, and obviously we can uh, put it back into service after that. I mean, these ones are, are fairly straightforward if plumbers did want to do them anyway, because the, the stat itself just pushes on. So I'll get these crop clips out of the way and show you. So you can see there, it kind of demounts and, and comes off the off the clips there. Um, the thermostat itself uh, contains the wiring, so the only connection they would have to adjust would be the, the earth one. Uh, that could actually do with a crimp connector putting on there, actually, so I'll do that before I go as well. And, uh, yeah, it should be quite easy for a heating engineer to do the maintenance on that themselves, but if we have to come back and check it over once it's in, we can do. Uh, but for the time being, that's, that's back and working, um, even when it was... A bit iffy, we were still clearing five or six mega ohms. Uh, usually you'll start getting um, potential trips at anything around two mega ohms and under. But really anything under 10 is an indicator that you know you want to be considering advising that replacement. And definitely so after you've um, made sure it's, it's been in operation and dried out. Like I say, I don't think this element's been on in about four or five weeks. It's just been sat there in the tank doing nothing. So yeah... Um, little bit of a tip there for you. I hope you found that video useful and uh, yeah thanks for watching.